Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So I've reviewed all manner of portable power chargers on this channel, from kinetic energy generators to thermoelectric to numerous different types of solar systems. And now we're gonna round it out with a portable hydroelectric power generating option. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this device. So the product we're going to be looking at today is the Water Lily 12 volt. It's actually 14.6 volts at 2 amps, so you get 30 watts of power at peak output. Portable water and wind turbine system. So all of the portable electric generation systems that I've demonstrated on this channel, they all have pros and cons. For instance, the kinetic energy generator by KTOR, in which you use your own bodily energy to generate electricity, has its limits in that obviously it requires work. It's not a passive way of harvesting energy, it's an active form. Very much like the flame store thermoelectric generator, it requires the constant boiling of water or combusting of a fuel source in order to generate electricity. However, there is the benefit that you can use these at any time. And when weighted against each other, the flame store is gonna require less energy on your part but you're still gonna have to make a fire and you're not gonna be able to use it indoors, whereas the KTOR power box generator can be used indoors, but it's gonna require more energy. So there's pros and cons to both. Now, with respect to solar power, uh, solar is probably still the number one way to collect energy. Unfortunately, you cannot use it at night, but by and large, it's probably one of the most portable, especially in the thin film, silicon amorphous panel option and it's easily scaled up now one of the benefits of this hydroelectric turbine is that in theory it should be able to run 24 7 if you're at a fast moving water source stream or an area which is sufficiently windy enough this is going to be one of its biggest drawbacks that basically if you don't have a fast moving water source or it's not windy where you are you're not going to be able to generate power now the one saving grace with all of this is that you still can use it as a hand crank generator they do supply you with a small hand crank that's going to allow you to generate electricity in an emergency if there is no fast moving water source available the only person i would recommend this to over a portable solar system are going to be people who you know live in the mountain regions or people who live or hike in places that tend to have a fast moving water source uh, another thing you're going to have to consider is that if you are going to make a campsite that your electronics may be far away from you because chances are you may not be putting your tent right up next to a creek although that would be an ideal situation that's not always going to happen and as such that means that you're going to have to leave the power station unmonitored so if something were to happen in your absence if something became disconnected or you know if uh, there was a wildlife passing through and decided to start gnawing on the wires it may be out of your visual range so you may have to leave it uh, unattended further from camp than you would if you were using solar personally i don't like camping right next to fast moving water sources uh, namely because you can't hear what's going on around you uh, the, wa the sound of the water easily drowns out what's going on in the surrounding environment i like to be able to hear what's going on outside my tent at night but some people you know don't mind this and it really depends on the region that you're in if you're not concerned about various hazards and threats then you don't really have to worry about this now if you have a system like the energy kodiak power system and you wanted to power this device obviously at 30 watts it's going to take a hell of a long time to charge that 1.1 kilowatt hour battery but if you're going 24 7 and you are getting that full 14.6 volts at 2 amps then you're definitely going to be able to fully charge it probably in a day and a half or so and that's pretty good considering the kodiak is a very large portable uh, power pack Obviously, if you just want to charge smaller devices like cameras, uh, cell phones, lights, battery banks, then you can do that directly from the provided USB, but you would need adapters if you wanted to use this with a energy power system. 
Personally, I would only recommend it for that purpose if you, say, had a regular camping spot that you visited, that you knew there was going to be a constant supply of water, then this definitely would be a very good way to recharge your electronics. And the thing with the water lily is that it is built very durable. There are some issues though with the design, which probably were only an issue where I was using it. If you were to use this near a fast moving water source where there's not a lot of sediment and there's not a lot of seaweed and stuff like that, or grass, you wouldn't have the problems that I was running into in the one creek I was using it in. And uh, the company says that this typically is a problem earlier in the season when all of the old vegetation is thawing and getting flushed down the waterway. But I did run into a problem in my testing where the turbine was getting bound up with grass and that was increasing resistance on the turbine and which made it basically not work. It wasn't elect generating enough electricity. The other thing is you're definitely gonna need a fast moving current. Now, what I found is that it really depends on the part of the stream that you put it on because not all the water in a waterway is moving at the same speed. You know, there may be narrow channels where, you know, the water is moving a little bit faster. There's, there's more pressure through that narrow than a more open stream where the water doesn't have to be funneled and thus is not moving as fast. So you really have to find a sweet spot with it. Um, that's another thing in which solar beats this out is that solar is much easier to set up for the most part. This thing might require you, you know, to get your feet wet. You're gonna have to go into the creek, uh, find an ideal spot to set this thing. And it may require a bit of maneuvering for you to get it set in an optimal place where it's not going to be prone to collecting that debris I was talking about. Now the thing with solar though, unless you're using a flat thin film amorphous, you're gonna have to adjust that throughout the day to point at the direction of the sun. Whereas this, you set it once and you forget it. So the setup for this might take a little bit longer, but in the long run, it's gonna be easier to maintain. Whereas solar, the setup's not going to be as hard, but in the long run, there's gonna be a bit more maintenance throughout the day to make sure it's angled towards the sun. Now the company says that the propeller will also be turned by wind, but I wasn't able to achieve that. You're gonna to have to have a pretty fast moving wind in order to power it. Now they claim that the minimum charge speed for wind is 6.7 miles per hour, but I would say that's bare minimum and you're certainly not gonna be getting 30 watts at uh, that wind speed. And in water, they say that uh, 0.62 miles per hour is what's required. Once again, in that much water, you're not gonna get a sufficient charge to really power a whole heck of a lot. So I wouldn't really go by those numbers. Those are the bare minimum. You're definitely gonna want a faster moving water source. This would be ideal for a waterfall situation. If you're close by one, I found it really worked very well there and it was a very consistent, smooth, a constant source of power that was being generated. I think this also might be a good idea if you had a canoe, if you wanted to mount it out on the outside of your canoe, or maybe even on the underside, or you could put it on a bicycle and you could generate electricity by wind. But I really don't think that that's going to be that practical for most people in a lot of situations. I think that if you are actually gonna be going hiking with this, you're gonna to wanna to absolutely make sure that there's a place for you to use it when you get to your destination. This is not one of those things that you wanna just be carrying around because you may find a place to use it. You're definitely gonna to wanna to know that there's a place that you can actually set this down uh, so that it's gonna be useful. So I do applaud the company for their innovation. I do think this thing is very robust. It, it's very well built, it's very streamlined, it's very durable. Some of the cores could be a bit better protected against the water, but they did a fairly good job with this. They also provide you with a dry bag so that you can put your electronics into. If they are near a water source or if you did wanna charge stuff in the rain. Another drawback of this that I just thought about is that in winter time, uh, solar is gonna be superior because obviously you, you may not be near a running water source in winter or the water that you're near is gonna be frozen. So if you wanna get one of these, I'm gonna post a link in the description I think if you're a person who lives in a mountain region, you do a lot of hiking, you do a lot of backcountry camping around places where there's fast moving creeks and waterways, and this might be ideal for you. But for everybody else, especially if you're in the desert, just get some solar panels. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself 
by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.